What's up everybody? Welcome to the video and welcome back. It's been like three weeks now. Hopefully I remember how to do this. It was a little bit weird, but we are here going short track racing once again at Richmond for the second time this season. Night racing as well for the kickout 400 for August 11th around 6 p.m. Eastern. And I know Richmond, not the most exciting track in the world, but we are adding a bit of a twist this weekend. We do have prime and option tires like the all-star race that we did at North Wilkesboro back in may we're gonna have eight yellow prime sets and then also three red option sets i'm not really sure how much this is going to affect the racing but either way at least it's something to have us look forward to a little bit because as we've all come to find out short track racing in this next gen car usually doesn't produce the best racing in the world but after three weeks off i don't care i will take whatever i can get but anyway this happens to be your first time here what's up my name is chris Pinelli. i break down nascar dfs each and every single week on this channel videos on saturdays live streams on sundays but this being a night race, planning for an evening stream, so maybe somewhere around 4 p.m. Be there, be square, always a good time. And really quick, I do have to give a shout out to, well, two or three weeks ago's common contest winner, Ollie and Chris Bailey. Both hit Tyler Reddick at 42, he led 40, you guys tied, so I'll have to split it up a little bit. But if you want to run it back once again this weekend, all you gotta do is comment down below who you think is gonna lead the most laps and how many, and the winner will get a cash prize. If you enjoy, make sure you like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new, and let's dive right into it. All right, let's talk some strategy here for Richmond. Nothing crazy here, it's just a short flat track. I know we are introducing a different tire this weekend for Richmond, but honestly, it's probably gonna be very similar racing. Old abrasive surface, so it does wear down the tires quite quickly. And with 400 laps, that's what, 280, 300, close to 300 kilometer points. So you're going to want at least two doms per lineup, two to three for the most part. And I know passing is not very easy at these types of tracks, but we could jump it up so many times. I am sure if there is some place, differential place in the field, they can end up getting there just based off of cautions, guys jumbling around and things like that. Although they're probably not going to be a ton of passing on the track. If you're an extremely fast car, you should be able to make some moves over the course of a long run. And while there is no concern about getting practice in, I know we had a lot of rain come in from Debbie, and trust me, down here in Fort Myers, got a ton of it. But I do like to show you guys the green flag speed heading into the weekend to show you who has been fast. And don't be surprised if these are the guys that are fast during the race or in practice and qualifying. If we look at green flag speed on short flats, this is since the start of last season. Like we're going to exclude 2022 now from the next gen data, at least on my end. Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, William Byron, Truex, Denny Hamlin. Kind of guys you'd expect. And if we look specifically at the similar tracks for this season and Richmond, Chase Elliott's going to be at the top of the board here. Christopher Bell, Larson, Blaney, Byron, Logano, Hamlin, and Truex. A lot of the similar faces. And if we look at just 2024 overall, green flag speed, which is something I do weigh in because if you've been fast this year, obviously it's going to help. The two up top are never a surprise and they are typically 1-2 in almost any category. But Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, then you have Byron, Truex, Reddick. Bell Elliott. These are the guys that have been fast this year, and these are probably the guys that are going to be the contenders. There's a reason they are the favorites, because they've just been playing fast this year. And finally, moving on to the Driver Bob Driver Breakdown, I did to mention one thing first, and that is, of course, if you want to join the best NASCAR Davis community out there, link is down in the description or the pinned comment for the Patreon. Also, if you don't want to commit to a month, you can now purchase the post, which is the model. You get everything in the model here. I don't remember what the price is, maybe like 10 bucks for the week. If you want to try it out, you can certainly do that. We need access into the entire NASCAR model the projections for both sites. I simulate the entire slate out many, many, many times, and I just show you what it spits out. I have the entire betting dashboard, which goes over top manufacturers, top drivers for each manufacturer, outrights, top three, top five, top 10. I do all the sims for that. And the optimized ownership projections, all that fun stuff, you can check it out if you want. I'm still doing baseball every day, but we do have NFL coming up very, very quickly, and I do cover it in a similar fashion, so I'm excited about that. So if you wanna come in, check it out. You know where to find all this stuff? Link can be found down below, and I'd love to have you over. And don't forget, if you want to take your game to the next level, you can check out the Stochastic Sims tools. They do it for all sports, but they did include NASCAR earlier this season. You can upload mine, your own, or their custom ones already set on these site projections, and simulate the entire slate before the race happens using their contest generator and pre-contest simulator. See which drivers offer the best ROI or which lineup stack up the best in tournaments. If you want to check it out, use the link down below, and make sure you tell them I sent you. All right, so practice and qualifying just ended a few moments ago, and I will tell you right now practice seems like some fake news big time because if you were looking at the practice results and then just kind of transferring over your knowledge of who should be fast at short flat tracks and then if you look at qualifying it doesn't make any sense so i think we kind of just have to throw out practice obviously guys run different tires you have the hard tire which is the prime and then you have the option tire which is the soft and it's just all kind of mixed up. Some guys went out later. If you're looking at Hendrick, like Chase Elliott was like at the bottom of the chart and he's one of the fastest cars in qualifying. He's been fast at these types of tracks this year. So I am kind of throwing this all out. So I don't really want to mention 
practice much. Like you're telling me Chase Elliott, William Byron, Cal Larson are the worst cars in the track. I don't think so. So just really not paying attention to these. You're telling me Daniel Suarez is going to be the race winner. Chris Buescher. Oh, I mean, Chris Buescher is good, but there's a, there's a couple. Sure. But I mean, they really don't add up for the most part. So not going to reference really these whatsoever. All right, so we'll start with the 10K drivers and up first. And we got four of them this weekend. And really should be no surprise who they are. We're going to start with Denny Hamlin. And the pricing is pretty soft this week. It's a 400 lap race. So you're going to want to jam in probably a couple of these guys in your laps because they're potential lap leaders. And it's not going to be hard to build this week, I don't think. I have not ran projections or anything yet. So I'm not 100% sure. I haven't looked at those scrubs yet because we're going through this together for the first time because qualifying literally just ended a couple mo- minutes ago. But Denny Hamlin being on the pole, we know he's good at short flats. He is good at Richmond. He is good pretty much everywhere this year. He's one of the fastest cars in the track almost every single week. Looking at how he's performed at Richmond in the next gen era, we have a five race sample size here. He has the best average finish of all drivers, the best average running position, the best driver rating, two wins, four top fives, won the recent race here. Although that was probably Martin Truex Jr.'s race to win, or to lose, I should say, and late caution did screw him over, but either way. Denny Hamlin's been awesome. He's been a rock star. No reason not to like him here. Great at the next gen similar tracks as well. So yeah, he is the starting point in cash games and there's a good chance I would say he leads a lot of laps on Sunday. Cal Larson, he'll be starting in 15th and while he's not as slow as the practice times indicate, does not look like he's got a top dom. He, I mean, I don't want to say he doesn't have a race winning car because we have seen guys that start in the teens here at Richmond. They can move up over the course of a race. There's going to be a lot of pit stops. I mean, you know, the five team is great at making adjustments. I would say as of right now, though, he's not going to be one of my race winning contenders. So he'll probably be like in that second tier because you know how good the adjustments can be made here. And he has been good at Richmond. He has won here three top fives. Like he'll be good, but I do think he'll definitely be behind guys like Chris Rebell, Martin Truex Jr., maybe even Chase Elliott as far as being a top dominator for this race. Now he's probably better play on Fandel where those dominator points don't mean as much and the PD slash finishing position will add up more. So I do think he's a better Fandel play. Not saying he can't play him on DraftKings, but. Kind of my thought process on Larson. And then Chris Rebell and Martin Truex Jr. Pretty much viewing them as the same plays. Although if I had to pick one, Martin Truex Jr. does crush Richmond quite often. Has the most dominant points here in the next gen era. Was amazing here earlier in the spring. Four top tens, two top fives, and just some of the overall best, best numbers. Hamlin's not leading a lot of laps early on. It'll probably be Martin Truex Jr., but I'll be mixing and matching Bell, Truex, and Hamlin. Because I'll tell you right now, they're just going to be the top three potential dominators and I'd probably put Chase Elliott in fourth just doing the eyeball test here so you really you're just mixing and matching those four for the most part dropping out of the 9k range Ryan Blaney does struggle historically at this track he'll probably be a top 10 contender but I don't really want to pay ten thousand dollars for him I just don't think the dominator points will be there so I will pass Brakislavski starting all the way back in 29th 9600 bucks Bit of a tough price point to pay, especially if you're focusing on your doms up top, like a Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr., or Christopher Bell. You're going to be running out of money. Now, the way you can probably play Pragislowski with multiple dominators is if you kind of use these cheaper guys, like Josh Berry starting in third. I know he doesn't kind of profile as your typical dominator, but I would say there's a chance he could get some laps led in this race. He's starting in third, and then you also have Chase Elliott, who I think will be pretty fast this weekend, starting in fourth and only $9,200. So that's where Pragislowski kind of fits in more. Or if you go with like the one dom build, with Keselowski, then one of the cheaper guys. That's one way to go about it. On Fandle, I mean, it makes a lot more sense over there because you're not really sacrificing much, only $9,500. That's much cheaper on Fandle compared to DraftKings. And the dominator points don't really mean as much. And at Richmond, overall, very good numbers for BK. We know he's good at tire conservation, which is what you're going to need here at Richmond. Three top 10s, five top 15s. I don't think he's going to be like a top five, top 10 guy for this race. But if he can battle in the top 15, the 10th, then maybe you get lucky on some pit strategy. It can certainly work out. So I think Kislowski is obviously in play. Not a, lot, not a lock by any means, even though he's starting that far back. Uh, William Byron, 9400 bucks. He's starting in 13th. I do have two small outright bets this weekend. I have William Byron at plus 1900 over on Fandle, just like 0.3 units on that. Then I also have Chase Elliott at plus 1400, 0.3 units on that. I don't know how I feel with the Byron one. I feel like that's probably about the same. But I do feel good about the Elliott one starting in fourth. It looks like he's got a fast car, so I think I'll get a good line movement, at least on that. So I would say between these two, I'm going to prefer Chase Elliott starting in fourth. I think there's a better chance he can lead some laps and dominate, but really they kind of feel like the same play in my exposure. It'll probably be somewhat similar, but I'll have a lean on Elliott on DraftKings because of the dominator point upside. And then as far as Fandle is concerned, I would say probably pr- 
pretty even there. Dorley Gano, $9,100. He is starting a ninth. I think he's an excellent turn and play. He crushes Richmond, one of his better tracks. If you're looking at his overall numbers, five very sample size here in the next gen era. 7.2 average finish, which is one of the best numbers. 8.3 running position, which is third only behind Truex and Denny Hamlin. Four out of five races, he's been inside the top 10. And a lot of daughter points. And honestly, if the race stayed green in the spring, there was a chance he could have ran down Truex and won that race. So he was right there in the mix. And I believe he started, I have to fact check this, but I think he started like a 9th, 10th, or 11th, somewhere around that range. So he's kind of like the same play here. And he's pretty cheap. So I think Logano definitely makes a lot of sense. I and mean, he is great at short flat tracks. That is his bread and butter. Busher is a former winner here. Somewhat of a same play. As Joey Logano, but I do prefer Logano, just some more experience here. And I mean, obviously, I feel like if it's not a pricing concern, I would take Joey heads up, plus you get the extra two spots further back. But Busher has won here recently in an extra gen car and wouldn't be surprised if he runs well, but nearly $9,000 for him does feel expensive. Tyler Reddick, I'm probably going to pass on. I usually don't play him with the short flat tracks too often, unless it's Phoenix. He does run pretty well there, but. Five race sample size here in next gen, only one top 10 finish. Running position of 15th, if we're looking at short flats in general. 14 race sample size, running position of 12th, only two top fives, seven top 10s. I don't really want like an eighth place finish, 800 bucks starting in 10th. Unless he can just get a bunch of fast laps, but that's not something I can totally bank on. Alex Bowen's probably going to be around a 15th place car. So not, a lot of, not a lot of interest there. Ty Gibbs starting in 14th, we probably see him battle for top 10 but he's gonna be in that 10th to 15th range i'd say most likely kyle bush 8200 bucks another kyle bush experience this week but it looks like rcr at least has some speed he'll be starting in 12th man the eight car has been bad bad since 2023 at the short flat tracks so we're looking at his numbers i was finished 21st prime position of 19th one win but two top fives which the win was a gateway two top fives three top tens and only four top 15 so you can probably feel good about not having much kyle bush this weekend is cheap over on Fandle, but man, I just feel like there's probably going to be better plays as we go further down. And speaking of potential better plays, we have Ross Chastain, only $7,900. bucks. he will be starting in 22nd. And if we're looking at his numbers in the next gen car at Richmond, running position of 12th, which is the same exact as Kyle Busch, finishes are as good. But take a stroll here for a 14 race sample size. The short five tracks, his numbers look so much better than Kyle Busch. So if he's going to start 10 spots further back, I feel like I'd rather just play Ross Chastain at that point. Josh Berry, 700 bucks. He is going to be a wild card play only in tournaments, but starting in third, I think this is a track that Josh Berry can excel at. So I don't think a lot of people are going to want to play him starting in third, but he does have an outside chance of getting some dominant points or at least staying within the top six and getting some fast laps throughout the decent portion of the race, at least in stage one. So I'm not going to be out on Berry, even though he is starting very high. But Wallace starting in eighth. It's a bit high for me. I do think he ends up fading back. Josh Berry, I would say, has a better chance of getting dominant points between the two. While starting five spots further back, maybe that makes him a little bit safer. And if I remember correctly, he did run well here in the most recent race. And if we're looking at short flat track numbers in general, with Wallace running position of around 12th, I think it's likely both end up fading back, but Barry's probably a better chance to get some fast laps, at least early on. Austin Cindric, 74 bucks. He is starting in 18th. I don't really see myself playing him. Hasn't really been amazing at Richmond in the two car. And if we're looking at 14 race sample size here, I mean, usually around 20th to 25th place. Starting in 18th, there's just not a lot of room for upside for me. Michael McDowell starting in 28th. Probably ends up moving up a little bit. His short flat track numbers are decent. Usually around a 16th, 20th place car. If we're looking at Richmond specifically, that is amazing. 22.6 average finish. I'm just around 25th. He is probably going to be a 20th to 25th place car here. So at 7100 bucks, it's not going to grade out amazing, but it's okay. Chase Briscoe kicking off our 6K range seems maybe a little bit more interesting here. I haven't even looked at the practice times. So I just don't really think they matter, but I mean, both were fast, I guess. That's what you want to call it. I don't really think they are based off of what we've seen in qualifying and then practice. But Chase Briscoe, if you're ever going to play Briscoe, you don't want to do it at the intermediates. You usually want to do it at the short flat tracks. So and at Richmond, running position of 16th, average finish of 15th. Three top 15 finishes, four top 20s, and overall some pretty decent numbers here. So I think Briscoe at 1600 bucks does make sense there. I, I do think he is playable this weekend. I'd rather play him over Daniel Suarez. I know his practice numbers were amazing, and I hope people really pay attention to these practice numbers because I just don't really think they mean much at all. So I, I would rather play Briscoe, even though his times are slower. No Gregson, 16th. His times suck, but again, practice. Just I'm going to get off that page before I even start mentioning it again. Gregson, I don't really see myself playing starting against 16th. I'd rather just play Briscoe personally. Todd Gilland, 
you have to imagine he's going to run somewhat somewhere to Michael McDowell. He's a little bit cheaper, starts a few spots further up. Gillen usually like around 20th place car. He's okay. It's like the nicest thing I can say, I guess, is that he is okay. I really have nothing else to say because practice doesn't seem to matter, so I don't really have anything else I can go in depth on. Carson Hosevar, right back to starting close to 20th. Low 6K range. He's is like the same play every single week. He's probably going to run right around 20th, and how he finishes depends on if he makes a mistake at some point late in the race. Other than that, I would expect him to be like a 20th place car. Eric Jones starting in 27th. He should be able to move up. I think he'll be a top 25 contender. Justin Haley starts pretty much dead last, only in front of Parker Retzloff. So out of Haley, we know he's had a pretty good season. Usually like around a 25th place guy at these short flat tracks. Richmond for him hasn't been amazing, but starting almost dead last. I get that there will be appeal there. And as long as there's a little bit of carnage, maybe if you guys wreck out, I don't know, have an issue. As long as he doesn't make stupid mistakes, he should be able to limp his way to a top 30 at the very least. 5K range, we have Austin Dillon who took over practice pretty much. He was looking really good at the top in the one lap and then was top five the rest of the way. Again, not really sure how much it matters, but he did qualify well and Kyle Busch didn't look that bad either. And it takes a lot for Austin Dillon and Kyle Busch not to look bad. So maybe we should give RCR some credit this week. So I'm not going to completely dismiss Austin Dillon because if Austin Dillon somehow that practice speed transfers over to the actual race because it did a little bit in qualifying and he is able to run within the top 10, top 12 and get some fast laps mixed in here and there because all it takes is run top 10 and you're going to get fast laps. That's really all it takes these days. At 5,800 bucks, it might not be the worst thing in the world because if we look at the heat map here and we head over to Austin Dillon, again, this is probably an extreme where he finishes 12th, but 25 points, maybe he gets some fast laps. You're talking almost 30 points. You can't write that off. That would be pretty good at 5,800 bucks. So I have, as crazy as it sounds, I think Austin Dillon might end up being in play. It's not going to feel good, though. He is purely a tournament play only. Ricky Snash Jr., he's starting in 33rd. Probably going to be very slow, and there's a chance these guys get left. Depends on how the cautions fall. Ryan Priest in 26. If you're ever going to play Ryan Priest, same for Chase Briscoe. You do it at the short flat track, so I will be in on Ryan Priest this week. Some overall pretty good numbers here at Richmond. Running position of 15th. Average drive rating of 83, and compared to everybody else in this range, that is the best we have seen since Josh Berry, all the way up at $7,800. So I think Ryan Priest definitely in play this week. Short flats, 14 race sample size, average finish, and average running position inside the top 20. And in 14 races, nine top 20. So I think Priest definitely makes some sense here. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek, he is a free spin at some point. Corey LaJoy, I hate him. He sucks. No, thank you. If he wants to burn me, he can burn me. Zane Smith, very fast in practice, but again, doesn't mean anything. I don't think he'll probably end up fading back. Ty Dillon probably ends up fading back. Uh, if you're playing any of these guys, it's really just trying to jam in like three top dominators and just hope none of them run into an issue. Like we've seen Daniel Hemrick have random P16 finishes this year. and It could always happen. You just never really know when it's going to be because it's based off of carnage or just weird pit strategy and you can't project that. But with that being said, that's all I got for you guys this week. So I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. I feel a bit washed and rusty. It's been a, such a long time, so hopefully it wasn't too bad. I wish you the best of luck. If you want to join the contest, make sure you comment down below who you think is going to lead the most laps and how many, and the winner I will cash out. If you want to check out all the extra content over on Patreon, you know where to find it. Link will be found down below. I'll be live probably around 4 p.m. tomorrow, so come in and say hi. I'd love to see you. I wish you the best, and I'll see you all next time.